Hello everybody, it's Kenneth from the Archives here with another video dipping into our collections and delving into Dundee's past. Today I'm going to be talking briefly about a very important item in our collections, William Crawford's Map of Dundee from 1776. And here it is in all its glory. Now, this is a very important map for a number of reasons, not least it's the first really accurate map of Dundee at that, this kind of detail that is known to exist. Um, it's also wonderfully detailed uh, and really wonderful to look at. Um, we can see a lot about how Dundee's changed, also what stayed the same as well. The thing most people are drawn to immediately when they first see this is how small Dundee is in 1776 compared with today. And you really get an idea of that. It's really the town has grown around five main streets in the centre. We're starting to get a little bit of growth over to the east, uh, and there's also growth to the north up the hill town. But it's still, compared with Dundee of today, the built area is tiny. Now, you may notice that there are some text down in the corner, and here we see it more close up. And this basically was to highlight some key buildings and also to put the name of some closes on. And we get an idea of some of the buildings that are being highlighted from this section. So building A, they've called it Town Hall, but was always later known as the Town House, founded in 1730. Well, that date's perhaps slightly contentious. Some people would say 1731 or 32. But that is the William Adam Town House that used to stand in the High Street for 200 years until it was demolished in 1932. Building B is another famous lost Dundee building, Samuel Bell's Trades Hall, which was actually only built in 1776, as you can see there. So it was a brand spanking new building. Building C is located, it's a bit difficult to see the C, but it's located just behind the townhouse. And that was the grammar school. Now, the grammar school is one of the precursors to today's high school of Dundee. And it didn't actually stay there that long after the map was made. And I'll mention that as we come on to one of the later part of the talk. Here we see the centre in a little bit more detail having zoomed out. And you can see that the core streets there are names that you'd be familiar with today, like Nethergate, Murraygate, uh, we've got Overgate and Seagate as well. Now, what I like about this is that if you see this, it almost looks like it's somebody swimming. It's the shape of a body with arms and legs at either side. Now, you may think that's familiar. And indeed, that is because the body logo that was chosen to be the logo of Dundee 800 back in 1991 was inspired by this idea of the street plan uh, as it looked at this time and at other points as well. You can also see there how close the centre was to the Tay at that time uh, and to the river. And we'll have a look at the harbour area a bit in a moment. Now, this you will recognise as the Nethergate and the Overgate. Now, the Overgate, of course, is now a shopping centre. The actual street itself has disappeared. And the Nethergate's now a lot wider. Also, of course, now there's no buildings on the north side in front of the churches. But it's the church I want to draw your attention to here. Because you'll know this is what's now called the city churches. But you'll see here it's in two parts, uh, both labelled Building E. Now, one part is what you'd recognise today as where St Mary's Church is, um, and the centre bit where, partly where the Slicer Centre is, but there's a bit missing. It's not connected to the other part, which is the old steeple, uh, one of Dundee's oldest and probably most famous buildings. So what is going on here? Well, actually, the whole church complex was medieval, uh, and at various times it's had various numbers of congregation and individual churches worshipping within the whole complex. Uh, it, at one point, there were five congregations. Um, it's currently two, one in the steeple end and St Mary's at the other end. What's happened here is at various times in the, the 17th century, and indeed the 16th century, Dundee had been vulnerable to attack uh, with various Scottish wars going on. Uh, and as a result of that, the nave which connected the steeple to the rest of the church complex ha had been lost, probably during the 1540s, actually. Um, but by 
after the time of the War of the Three Kingdoms, we know, for example, um, it was a ruin uh, and horses were stabled there at some point. So by the time we came to the 1770s, that had gone. Now, a few years after this, they rebuilt it and the whole complex was reconnected. Unfortunately, the bit that's marked E uh, was almost totally lost when a great fire hit the city churches in 1841. Uh, and they were destroyed and had to be rebuilt. So the steeple is actually the only bit there that's still there to this day. Now you see the street running parallel to its Kirk Wind. Now that's gone through a number of changes over the years. I mentioned the grammar school earlier. Well, there was another school here called the English School, which again is one of the precursors to the High School of Dundee. And a few years after this, the grammar school also moved to there, and it then became known as School Wind. Now, of course, they all moved up to the public seminaries at today's High School of Dundee in the 19th century. Uh, and a, the build, School Wind then later became known as Lindsay Street. Now, of course, the street doesn't exist today. You can walk the line of it, but it's a pedestrianised area running parallel to part of the Overgate Centre. I mentioned the harbour area. I think it's important to look at it because how small it is. This is not like the great complex of docks Dundee would have in the 19th century. Now, Dundee was a significant trading port, but you can see here just how basic the harbour was. Uh, and it's if you compare it with what came, it's amazing the difference. Again, you also get an idea of how close the water came into the town. Look at Yeeman Shore. Of course, Yeeman Shore, now a street name in Dundee, that is literally on the shore. Down there, we've got Craig Pier, which is roughly where Discovery is, uh, and indeed is probably, the, in some ways, the oldest continuously used part of Dundee's waterfront. If we move along to the Cowgate, I mentioned we're seeing expansion to the east. Uh, and one of the things that we're seeing here is the emergence of churches. So St Andrew's Church, the foundation stone, was laid just four years before this. And this was one of Dundee's great new public buildings at the time. And indeed, the Trades Hall, which I mentioned earlier, uh, there was distinctive Arctic architectural echoes between the two, um, partly in, due to the fact that St Andrew's was the Trades Church. Now, next to it, you'll see this little octagonal building that just says independent meeting. And this was where the Glassites met, the Glassite church founded in Dundee by the Reverend John Glass. And that building, like St Andrew's, survives to this day uh, and indeed is now a hall of St Andrew's church. The Seagate and Cowgate have obviously changed greatly since then. Again, I would stress how close the waterfront's coming. You can see Sugar House Pier there just down from the Seagate. Now, of course, today that goes much further. And if we go along a bit further into Blackscroft, look at where the shore's coming into. Now, this would all now be land area. And this really explains one of the reasons Dundee was able to grow was by land reclamation. Now, a large part of that in this area was connected to the fact they built the Dundee and Arbroath Railway, as I've discussed in a previous video, along the shoreline, thereby cutting off areas of water, which they would then reclaim and build on. Now, there you see Peepa Day House. Now, of course, that's one of Dundee's more interesting street names because we've still got Peepa Day Lane to this day. You also see Wallace Craigie, uh, which was a great area of Dundee um, and did survive in, for example, the name of Wallace Craigie Works, but is today a name that has not as well known as it once was. So I hope you've enjoyed that brief discussion of some of the highlights of the map. Do get in touch if you want to know more. But in the meantime, stay safe, take care and we'll talk again.